Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about an in-development CDI core, Amiga CD32 support added to the Amiga Vision project, some new beta and alpha arcade cores, and a lot more. Also, check out my channel sponsor, Mr. Add-ons, a place where you can get all your Mr. needs. Things like full Mr. setups, IO boards, accessories, and more. Now let's get to the news. There is now a CDI core that is in development by user Slammy on GitHub. Right now, it is in very early development and is only in the experimental stages. The GitHub says that the planned first milestone is having the boot ROM usable on the Mr. FPGA. You can check out on GitHub to see what components have already been implemented and what is on the to-do list. Since the source code is available on GitHub, it's possible for people to compile it and check it out for themselves. ROM loading is functional via the menu, but remember, this core is in a very early state, so don't expect to do much. Wizzo is now selling a Tap2 bundle with an updated Tap2 NFC reader and trading cards on his Etsy shop. The bundle includes a Tap2 USB-C reader, 10 Tap2 trading cards, a Tap2 logo sticker, a Wizzo.dev logo sticker, and you also have the option of adding a 25 centimeter USB-C to USB-A cable. Some of the trading cards have art from a few 16-bit homebrew games. They look very professional and to me, they look like they can actually pass for media for a game console. There are also NFC cards that you can physically write what contents you encode onto them. And in other Tap2 news, Stand Up Gaming has some cool physical pixel art designs and other retro related products that you can use to decorate your retro gaming setup. You can see exactly what they offer in their eBay store. Now soon, they'll be offering Tap2 editions of some of their pixel art figurines. They have built-in NFC support so you can use them to launch games on your Mr. FPGA. Wizzle has also been working on getting Tap2 to work on Windows computers, so you can use it to launch modern games on gaming computers. Wizzle even shows some Flash games being launched. The Windows release is delayed because Wizzle is hardening its security for Tap2's remote access feature. But if you want to try out a beta build, you can join the Tap2 Discord. Piergo gave a quick update on the progress for his upcoming Pandora's Palace core. Currently, he's making some modifications with better chip implementations, specifically the Konami 504 chip. Amiga CD32 games are now more easily playable on the Mr. FPGA thanks to the Amiga Vision project. The Amiga CD32 is basically a consoleized Amiga 1200 computer, and with the right third-party devices, you could convert a CD32 into an Amiga 1200 computer. It's also possible to have Amiga 1200 computers run CD32 games with software tools like SimCD32, Squirrel CD32, and IDE Fix. The process can be complicated, but the Amiga Vision team has us covered and made the process easy. You might be thinking, why play the CD32 versions of games that were already on the Amiga computers? Well, the CD32 did have some cool expansions of existing Amiga games with CD audio and full motion video. The Amiga Vision team has some recommendations for some of these games. Those are Super Stardust, which is a fun and extremely polished Asteroids type game with an incredible ton of shooter sections and a great CD soundtrack. They recommend using a code that takes you straight to the first tunnel level. Another game is Universe, which is an underrated adventure game with fantastic graphics and an interesting storyline. They also recommend Super Frog, which is Amiga's answer to Sonic the Hedgehog and is a great little platformer with great sense of speed. And the CD32 version has a full motion video cartoon intro. Benefactor is also another recommended game. This is a puzzle platformer with a great CD soundtrack. And another recommendation given is Beneath a Steel Sky. This is one of the best adventure games that isn't a LucasArts game and has a great CD soundtrack. The Amiga Vision team also warns us that there are bad dumps of Amiga CD32 disc images out in the wild, so it's best to stick to the redump CHD images. Ken from the What's Ken Making YouTube channel created a portable Mr. FPGA using the QM Tech board with built-in SD RAM. The design even integrates Tap2 support, so you can launch games by tapping NFC cards. There are still a few things to do, but a video build guide will be posted and the design files will be open sourced. The build is non-destructive to the FPGA dev board and it installs in the enclosure as is, headers and all. Hotego cores have now surpassed the 1000 MRA milestone. 
Currently, there are now exactly 1,009 MRA files for arcade games. This does include alternate versions of single games, but that's still a lot of games that are playable on the Mr. FPGA. Some of those games are even playable on other FPGA boards, as Otego developed a framework that can compile games for multiple FPGAs, including the Analog Pocket. I congratulate Hotego, his team, and other contributors for helping with this milestone. I look forward to getting to 2000 and beyond. Urkin Labs has their JAMA Expander back in stock. This device will give a Mr. FPGA JAMA capabilities so you can integrate it into an arcade cabinet that supports the JAMA standard. Here are some of the features supported by the Expander. 24-bit color, option for two SD RAM modules, their CRT protection with sync guard, a user lock function where you flip a physical switch and users will not be able to modify your setup. There are both main keyboard and gamepad modes for maximum flexibility, a four port USB hub and more. Cordova Baraki has shown off some simulation screenshots for Konami Salamander arcade game. This game was known as Life Force in North America. Raki says that the game looks pretty good and from the screenshots I agree. However, there is a slight problem with the Gamma. Since it's running through simulation, Raki is unsure on how it will look on the Mr. FPGA. Throughout the week, there was more progress made on the core and a Mr. FPGA Alpha Core was released on Patreon. This Alpha Core has no sound, but the game is playable. Here are the latest updates to the Mr. FPGA compatible devices by Taki Udon. For the flagship device, which looks like it's going to be an all-in-one device that has a built-in screen, Taki mentioned that he's found the best 4x3 AMOLED screen to use for the flagship. I'm not someone who's knowledgeable on how available certain screens are, but I'm surprised that there are AMOLED screens with 4x3 aspect ratios readily available. Even more surprising is that Taki mentioned before that all the Mr. Related products in development are planned to cost less than the DE10 Nano itself. So a fully compatible Mr. Device with 4x3 AMOLED screen and multiple connection options, all for less than $225. That's pretty amazing. Hopefully this AMOLED screen keeps the console within budget. Moving on, Taki also posted some short videos regarding the Mr. Handheld Device. They had to do with D-pad prototyping and the plan for the Mr. Handheld. It looks like the prototyping is done with 3D printers, but Taki said that the cases for the final devices will not be 3D printed. For the Mr. Triple Stack, Taki 3D printed a case and showed some images online. He'll make the 3D files freely available so anyone can print their own. It looks like Taki will not be selling these cases or will include a case in his Triple Stack because he says in this post, a case template people can print out while they wait for other options to be created. Current Mr. Cases will need some slight modifications in order for Taki's triple stack to fit on them. In this post, Taki shows his Mr. Device fitting on a case from Retro Castle. The only thing that needs to be modified is one side panel. Most cases I've seen from Mr. have all the sides independent from each other, so it looks like all vendors have to do is just offer a new side panels for the current cases they have. Super Track Mode is a script that works like a screensaver for your Mr. FPGA. When your Mr. is idle for a while, it will randomly select and load a new game. If you like the game that's being shown, just pick up your controller and start playing. If not, just let everything continue and after some time, a new game will randomly load. You can install Super Track Mode from the Tools and Script section of the Update All script settings. Now here's something that I wasn't aware Super Track Mode could do. If you go into the Super Attract Mode settings and select Presets and Game Mode, you can then select an option that says Play TV Commercials and then show the game. This will play old TV video game commercials in addition to running a random game. Videos are pulled from archive.org or YouTube and there are even predefined lists that you can customize. Video playback is possible thanks to Wizzle and Kristoff says that it is a version of mPlayer that uses Mr.'s frame buffer. It's not perfect, but it works pretty well. He said that experimenting with it, that even MP4s at 640x480 lag sometimes, so don't expect too much. This is so cool and I look forward to trying it out. Many thanks to Christoph Helms for creating Super Attract Mode and adding this feature. Hotego finally fixed a bug that locked up the Neo Geo Pocket Color Core at the second logo screen. He says that games seem functional now and some graphics are messed. 
He believed that this new issue should not be as hard to handle as the previous lockup issue. The CoinOp Collection team has released a beta for the Toplin Shooter Twin Cobra. To access this beta, you will need to be a Patreon subscriber, but the course should be freely available to everyone once it's out of beta. So that's it for this episode. Please also try to support Swords, the maintainer of the Mr. Project, and other Mr. Developers and contributors on support platforms such as Patreon and Ko-fi. Their hard work allows us to enjoy this amazing project. I also provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure to also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro-related content. And if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time. <music>